Hi guys, today I'm going to review the Dell XPS 12, which is a 12.5 inch laptop convertible as you can already see. It has this hinge and can also be used as a tablet or some kind of media station. It is definitely one of the better ones out there, but how well and especially compared to all the best ones out there? Let's find out in my full review. Let's damn it. Let's get around the device and check the ports first real quick. On this side we have the rotation lock, the headset jack, the power on off button, volume rock or cancelling key and one of the two stereo speakers. On the other side we have the second stereo speaker. This is an LED that shows you the charge when you click this button here. You have two USB 3.0, mini display port, the charging port otherwise on the back there is nothing. Same as on the front. Here we have this, the fans a stand and if you can see the overall design looks very nice and elegant the device itself due to this border even looks smaller than it is because it is a 12.5 inch but of the size of a macbook pro 13.3 so it looks smaller and it also feels lighter for some reason even though it's just this is 1.52 kilograms where the macbook pro is 1.57 kilograms so it is not much lighter but it feels definitely quite lighter otherwise the design and the mix is something I really like. It feels very good, very grip in the hand. It attracts fingerprints though, but this is not an issue. Definitely feels solid. A few things to mention though. It is usable in a normal laptop mode, but also as you can see already in tablet mode, which I didn't find so useful because if you use it in a normal position in your arm's length, I think 30.3 inch is just a bit too big and you are just too close to the screen. Otherwise, this is the one I would prefer. This is some kind of media mode. And the good thing here is lay it on your laps and then you can use it as a tablet with a bit more distance. This was fine. One thing to mention though, if you tip, sometimes you will hear this hinge. And that is also one thing I definitely have to mention is the hinge because that was a bit annoying for me because if you want to open this device with one hand, it is just not possible. It will always lift and this was annoying. You need two hands for this task. And the other thing is, if you want to just correct your angle here, it won't work because as you can see, the whole device flips. You, you can go in this direction, but not in this. It will always lift and you need two fingers because I think the hinge is just too stiff. And another thing, if you go totally back, the device, as you can see here, is flipping. This isn't really an issue because mostly you won't get above this level. So these things are fine. A small other quirks are, I don't like this button too much because it is no button, it is some kind of flip. I would wish for this to be a button. I would wish for this to be a bit less flush and maybe one USB on one and one on the other side because this would give you a bit more flexibility. Having both on one side limits you kind of to the right side. This is a small quirk but after all Let's get into the keyboard real quick and let me zoom in. The keyboard itself is very nice, typing is very good and another good thing here is the key travel. We have lots and lots of key travel and also a good feedback. So in overall, I like how you can type on it. There are a few quirks. I think the gap between the buttons itself is too big. We have backlit in two steps. I can't really show this on camera, but the backlight is okay. One thing there though is to mention, you usually see the backlight under the buttons from the side. If you are typing, you mostly see the, the light under the buttons. This is a bit weird, but not really annoying or disturbing or anything at all. So in overall, the keyboard is great for typing, but not quite as good as on the MacBook Pro or even on the Dell XPS 15, where I found it to be better. Another thing I'm not so much a big fan of is the touchpad. Using it with one finger, everything works fine. But even with two finger gestures for scrolling, a lot of times it just sees one finger and it just doesn't recognize it as a scroll attempt and moves the cursor. This is quite annoying and the more fingers you use because there are multi-touch gestures, there is a software where you can configure them, but they just don't work reliable and I even turn them off. The most annoying thing for me is the scrolling doesn't properly work. Now you can see it works but most of the times it doesn't. And there's also one thing I have to mention about this touchpad. It is quite sticky right now. It isn't because I have pretty dry hands, but usually in different angles in normal use, it was very sticky. And this was annoying because you just lack of precision there. So in overall about the device, 
it is built solid it is built nice the design is good but there are a few i i would say less smart decisions they made about it as for the touchpad that isn't just properly and the button placement but in overall it's still a very good design overall now let's get to the display and cover that we have a 12.5 inch 1080p display so nothing fancy but the good thing here anything is still very sharp and what i pretty much like you have no problems with scaling 12.5 inch or 13.3 inch with 1080p you should have no problems all the apps look fine nothing is blurry because there is no 150% scaling or something like that necessary. You can use 100% and everything looks mostly fine. As for the qualities of the display itself, let's check the brightness real quick first because here is something I can complain a little bit because as you can see here, usually all devices at 0% brightness are almost not visible anymore. Here you still see the screen pretty much and this is one thing. At night, even the dimmest setting is a bit too bright for me. The brightest setting is very bright and it is one of the most bright displays I've seen so far. This is one good thing, but keep in mind, it is not the dimmest one at night and sometimes even just too bright. As for the whites, you can see they look nice. Out of the box though, they were, I have to say it, too, too yellow. I had to correct it. As for the colors itself, I'm pretty happy with those. Blacks are very deep and especially that's one thing Dell knows to do very well, is keep the colors very nice and deep within videos because videos and movies look extremely good on this display no details get lost in the darkness and as you can see the display it looks vibrant it looks natural and it looks vivid that's a good thing windows itself looks a bit more dull but that's a windows thing and nothing the display can do anything about it but otherwise i'm totally fine with this display because no scaling issues a nice white very bright nice colors and their overall great sharpness, no problems here at all with anything. So definitely a great display, even though not super high res. It's time to get to the sound part and as always I will do a demo. And this time I will record the sound with my lavalier mic. So it is about 50 centimeters off, so practically a typical distance just to see the sound. Let's start it. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for the sound because I don't want to tell you too much because there is not too much to tell about. The thing is, the maximum volume is okay. In most of the situations, this was fine for YouTube and even for a TV show, but watching movies on this over the speaker is a no-go for me. Music also not so much fun because the thing is, we have no bass at all. This is okay. This is mostly the times on Ultrabooks, but the thing is... The sound itself is very shallow. The mids and the, the treble is okay, but the sound just sounds very distant and just quite shallow. And even though we have stereo speaker, it just doesn't sound a stereo speaker. For me, it sounds more like a mono speaker up here or anywhere. So the overall sound is quite disappointing. It gets the job done, but it is definitely nothing special to talk about. It's time to talk about the performance now. And as you can see, the values for the SSD, this is a high average, I would say as most of the other Ultrabooks did. Not as fast as the MacBook Pro, but definitely way than more fast enough as you would need on an Ultrabook. As for the other performances, the Wi-Fi speeds were fast, but you have to remember we don't have Wi-Fi AC, so speeds are definitely cut about in health, at least in my case. So AC would be nice to see, but it isn't, but it's still a fast A1. If you check the browser performance, you can see already this is Internet Explorer and super fast loading times here aren't that fast because my internet here isn't so fast but otherwise super smooth super fast with touch screen or with the mouse no problems here at all if you go into chrome as you can see very smooth not as smooth as in the explorer but with a mouse and that's what i would use on an ultrabook anyways so the browsing performance is great and i feel in Overall, the performance is better than on the other Ultrabooks, but maybe this is due to cause of the updates the device has gotten, because all the devices I've tested previously were maybe on the same performance now. Otherwise, just real quick, the PDF performance, as you can see, is brilliant, super smooth, super fast. You can zoom in, zoom out. Everything works as it should. And the overall speed of everything was fine. Video editing is no problem, but consider it is a HD 4400, so not as fast on the MacBook Pro. 
But in overall, if you want to do video editing on an Ultrabook, I would say this one is definitely a go, no problem here at all. As mentioned in my specs, I only have 4 gigabytes of RAM here instead of the 8, but I think this is some kind of review unit configuration, But because usually at the 256 gigabyte SSD version with the i7 I'm using here doesn't come with 4, but just with 8 gigabyte. So I wouldn't even mention this, because 8 gigabyte is the minimum I would go for. If you want to have an Ultrabook that is future-proof, go with the i7, and go with the 8 gigabyte because everything below is good for now but maybe not so much future proof but in overall the performance was very nice and i didn't have really any trouble with anything at all what i want to talk about now is the battery heat and noise the first thing is always a full charge needs three and a half hours which in my opinion is quite a bit long because it's at least half an hour more than most of the others and almost double what the macbook pro needs but then again you mostly will charge this overnight or something like this, so it's not the biggest issue. Battery life itself was nice, as you can see, I got an average of five and a half hours, but as you can see, my usage was mixed a lot, and I would even see six and above as the average. I would say definitely solid six hours should be no problem at all. This was what I motivated. This was just a bit of heavy mix testing, just to see what it is. Six hours, I would say, and I was pretty impressed by the battery life, because others just maybe got five and a, five, maybe four and a half or something like this. So it's definitely on the better side. As for the noise level, the fans kick in more often than some other tablets, especially as the MacBook Pro, but not more than like, let's say the Lenovo Yoga 2 Pro. And the heat level is also very nice because using it on my lap, it was never too warm. And maybe this is also a reason why the fans kick in more often. But the good thing about the fans are they sound like a mini vacuum cleaner far distant away. So the, the noise is quite pleasant, never really annoying. They kick in quite often, like I said, and they can get loud. But in most usual casual scenes, they were pretty subtle. They were noticeable, but definitely never annoying or really noticeable so bad. So in overall battery life is on the better side and the noise and the heat level is also as the same package definitely on above average level and I would say better than most of the others but not really by that much. The software is something we don't have to talk about too much because we are using Windows 8.1. Windows 8.1 you maybe know it either you love it or hate it I'm pretty fine I always liked it I never had any issue with it and I mostly want to talk about the bugs here because the system itself was good as it is, but there were a lot of software bugs. Sometimes the, the device, as you can see, now it rotates, but sometimes it just doesn't want to rotate back, or if you want to use it in portrait, maybe for PDFs, it just doesn't properly rotate always. Also, if you are rebooting it, sometimes just any startup app crashes, and sometimes even the touchpad driver, the touchpad still works, but you see some kind of false close on the screen. So there are definitely a few software bugs from Dell's side. Otherwise, you have a lot of Dell bloat. So if you can get a clean copy of Windows, I would recommend you to uninstall this or deinstall all the apps because there is a lot of bloat. But otherwise, in overall, the system was fine, not considering all the false close because they didn't really have any effect on the performance or anything. They just appeared and you clicked them away and everything was fine otherwise. Okay, let's recap this device real quick about the design and the build quality. The buttons and port layout maybe isn't the smartest one. The convertible function is pretty nice even though I didn't use it as much. We also have a touch screen but in the end an Ultrabook is something I don't use that much with a touch screen but it was fine. The, the keyboard was pretty nice. You have to get used a bit to the slightly different layout but the touchpad was something I just didn't like. So in overall it's definitely nice but it has some small quirks. As for the display, it is very bright, it is very sharp, it is not super high res though, but the colors were fine, especially watching movies was a joy on this device because we have a nice color and contrast ratio, especially on darker passages. So colors fine, brightness fine, the white was fine. The display itself, as I said, not the sharpest one, but a very good 1080p one. The sound though was a bit more of a disappointment though because it is quite shallow, quite tinny. It was just sounding way too distant in terms of the maximum volume, it was okay. Slightly a little bit of bass was there, but the overall experience was just about good enough, but definitely nothing you would really enjoy. In terms of performance, there's really nothing to complain about. We have the i7, four gigabytes in this case, but usually it's eight gigabytes. Everything was fast, everything was smooth. Video editing is possible 
everything else you would expect office of course and all this stuff for gaming i don't think it's that suited for because it is an ultra book after all some smaller lightweight older games work definitely but in terms of performance definitely a good thing as for the battery life heat and noise the heat was very nice through all the times therefore the fans kick in more often but definitely nothing to really be annoyed about it was a nice subtle vacuum cleaner sound i was fine with it the battery life itself the charging time was one thing i would have liked to be a bit faster but otherwise the battery life itself was quite good got me through a few solid days no problems here at all with some light moderate usage it should get even longer and even with normal use definitely nothing to complain about here as well the software itself with windows 8.1 is very solid a very good base but i think dell has to do a bit more work here because in a lot of forums i see people complaining about dell software a lot it is not just the amount of bloat apps but there are just a few driver quirks and something like this sometimes the device just turns on even though it's closed and this shouldn't happen so there are a few software quirks and since the device is already out for quite a while they should have definitely been solved already it didn't it didn't really have any impact on my workflow i could do everything but it's still annoying from time to time if you just see some things force close and you don't even know why and, and, and you don't see the immediate effect but otherwise it was fine okay it's finally time to answer my final two questions would i recommend it and would i buy it and if you are looking for a high-end ultrabook with windows 8.1 maybe even with a convertible function a very good display a very good keyboard then this is the one to go for also the battery life was very solid and the heat and noise was also pretty nice comparing it with a few others like the lenovo yoga 2 pro i would definitely re recommend to buy the dell xps because the keyboard was better you had less trouble with the scaling issues and otherwise and the overall design was kind of more of my thing it is also a good device, the Lenovo Ego 2 Pro, but I just didn't like the keyboard in overall so much. That's why I would slightly prefer the Dell. But it, would I buy it? And here I have to say no, because there's a MacBook Pro out on the market as well. And the MacBook Pro for the same price just has the rounder package where the gel just can't compete. Everything is pretty much on close to each other, but there are a few quirks the Dell has, the MacBook just doesn't have. So if you want to stay Windows 8.1, I would right now recommend to buy the Dell XPS 12, but otherwise you can check others like the MacBook Pro, maybe the Lenovo Yoga 2 Pro also, but in the end, this is right now my Windows 8.1 recommendation for now. This was my review of the Dell XPS 12. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and until next time, I'll be back.